Sports Center Top 10. Hear my voice. Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here at UConn with James Booknight. Uh, James, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Of course, man. Pleasure's mine. So what has this year you know, been like for you so far? Obviously, you know, some ups and downs, some huge games, uh, injuries. Like, how would you kind of describe you know, your sophomore season? Uh, it's really been like a roller coaster ride, man. Like with, with, with the pauses and the injuries and, and just like not being able to play like a full 30 game season, it's just been crazy, up and down for sure. And in terms of the next level, right? Like obviously you're worried about conference tournament, you know, today's practice, tomorrow, day-to-day -to -day grind, but is there anyone you've kind of been watching, studying, trying to take little things from and, and you know, you can see yourself playing a certain role at the next level? Yeah, uh, uh, well, a player comparison, a lot of people have been saying I play like Zach Levine, but I've been watching like a lot of Devin Booker mm -hmm. and Bradley Bill, a ton of things. Just like, like just small guards, little guards, where I can like take ball handling, pick and roll stuff from them, and then like someone like Zach Levine, an athletic guard, someone that can score, shoot a three, things like that, play both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no question, but you, we've seen the jump that you've made, you know, on, on both sides of the ball. And so we're going to break down some of your film here, just go through, you know, some areas where you've been really, really good, and then also ask you maybe some things that you're still working on, you know, to improve. So before we get into kind of the, the categorical stuff, um, have you always had this type of bounce? This is the, the putback dunk here uh, against Providence. This was the first game back, right? Mm -hmm. First game back. Have, have you always had, had that type of bounce? No, when I, when I was a freshman in high school, I, I couldn't even dunk. Like, it was like, when, when I first, like, caught my first, like, rim grades dunk, after that, I just couldn't stop. I will just go to the gym, and I, I promise you, I, like, just try to dunk the whole time. Like, I wouldn't shoot, nothing. And then it just, I, it just, like, over time, just, like, evolved. And then I started to do, like, windmills and crazy stuff, and then it just turned into this. Yeah, I mean, just, and just reading the ball off the rim here, the instincts, like, you're a very good positional rebounder. Has that always been an emphasis for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Re rebounding is just like something some I feel is like essential to, to being a, a, a tall, taller athletic guard. Like uh, getting a defensive rebound, just being able to push it in transition and just start the offense yourself. And our offense, just being able to find a way to get an easy basket or, or a way to energize your team when, when you need like like an energy boost. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we, we've seen the dunks, right? And, and you talked about uh, transition, getting out and, you know, whether it's grabbing a defensive rebound and just pushing, you seem to really come to life, you know, in, in the open court. I think like almost 30% of your offense is, is coming in transition so far this year. What makes you so dynamic in these type of situations? I think for a 6'5 guard, I'm, I'm really quick on my feet. Um, and I just feel like I, when, I'm, when I'm pushing the ball in transition and I'm in front of everybody, I, I feel like no one can beat me down the court. And I, here I just attack David Duke, who's a great player and just make a quick move uh, like it so he does it, so I can avoid the charge and just finish the lap. Yeah, like you said, you know, dynamic and then with a little like cross jab type of move, getting downhill and then the hand one, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you really come alive in these type of situations. I think you're going to fit really well kind of in a fast paced NBA game. And then here, um, a little change of direction, change of speeds. Anything you see here um, as you're looking, like any reads? Oh, uh, definitely. There's RJ in the, uh, coming down on the wing. Yep. Uh, okay, you cross half court. Yeah, waiting for Ty to sprint corner to like take his man out the play. And then there's also a big trailing for the drag screen. But I just felt like the defense was off balance. They weren't set yet. And then just a, a quick change of direction is just, just going to throw them off and just attack the big. Yeah, and that's exactly what you did. And, um, you know, definitely like keeping them off balance, like you said, and then seeing that kind of, was that an attempted kick out or no? Or you yeah, just I tried to hit Isaiah in the corner. And I think that's the next step. We'll get into that. Some of the, you know, pick and roll reads and, and playmaking, I think is the next step, you know, for you. But again, just to show how dynamic you are in the open court, being able to change speeds like that, change directions um, mm -hmm. is pretty special. And then, you know, here against USC too, or earlier in the year, just to show like what these hit aheads can look like, right? Do you feel like you're an underrated passer? Definitely. I, I think I think that like in the, in the role I'm in here is just like like being a, being able to be a scoring guard here mm -hmm. and be, but also growing into like that type of player where for for the rest of the year I'm able to like just just be a guard like yep. like someone that's making plays for others, someone that's scoring, someone that's defending, be, being like an all around guard instead of someone that's known as a scoring guard who could only go get a basket can't guard anymore just, just being like a, a tough all-around guard yeah because there are a lot of guys in the league who are can really fill it up right mm -hmm. you know you look at 
a Jordan Clarkson or Jamal Crawford even before him, right? Like there's those six man studs who are instant offense, microwave type guys. Yeah. But then you have guys who maybe could have ended up as that, but added other elements to their game, like Zach Levine, right? Like mm -hmm. people used to call him an empty stats guy. Yeah. You know, it doesn't guard, doesn't pass. Now he's playing like a point guard, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to be kind of in that group. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no question. And we've seen glimpses of it uh, for sure. And um, But again, in the open court, I think that's where you've shown, you know, your ability to get other guys involved too, you know, mm -hmm. there with just the, the basic lob pass and read. And, um, but I think that maybe what makes you most difficult to guard is just your ability to like play off of hesitations. Yeah. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, it, this is like the, the main part of my game. Uh, it's, it's just like, it, it's a, it's a so, such a simple move. There's a lot of like combinations out of this move. And it's just like, being able to shoot the three so well and then mm -hmm. having the hesitation in the game is just being able to get your defender off balance. Right, perfect that combo. Is what, yeah, this is what it's all about. So take me through this one then. So we got the Villanova game. Um, you got what, big on an island? What's going through your head here at this point? So I was coming off the stack of ball screen and they were switching everything in this game. So I just wanted to switch. I, I wanted to have uh, Jeremiah on me, mm -hmm. but it was a stack of ball screen and Isaiah didn't roll. So I, I had uh, Samuels, I think his name yep. is. And it's just like, like me and him on an island is just one on one, and a little hesitation and get him off balance a little bit, have him jumpy, not knowing what's gonna happen next, and just being able to step back and make a shot. Yeah, and he has long arms, quick feet, you know, sitting down. I mean, that's an NBA level size and length right there, and just the ability to create space off of that. And so, all right, we've seen the shot making right, and then you can play kind of off of that hang dribble, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right, Evan Mobley on an island, what's going through your head here? <laughs> Oh well, he, he it's like seven one. So yeah. I, I'm like, I'm not gonna try to shoot the three. I'm gonna just try to get him, get him off balance and beat him to the rim, and try to draw contact, and get it at one. So and what's then, kind of the rhythm to this then, to this move, right? Like, what's the key to having such an explosive hesitation here, aside from being able to shoot? So I feel like the little side dribble is like have him thinking I'm gonna probably shoot a three, and then the, I see, I see uh, the help defender coming. So I have, I think that's B A drifting to the corner. Yeah. But he he comes late. He comes over late, and I feel like just like a, a quick little reverse layup, and I'll be all right. Yeah, and you're able to get almost the other side of the rim there too. I mean, you've had some really impressive finishes, you know, using English from all different angles. Um, but again, I mean, Evan Mobley is seen as one of the more versatile defenders in this draft, and mm -hmm. you know, being able to blow by a guy like that, I think, is really, really impressive. So here you got Jeremiah Robinson Earl on an island. What take me through this one? Well, he's, he's, a, he's a five man, and I just feel like I'm quicker than him off the dribble. My mm -hmm. first step is fast, and I, I felt like they weren't really loaded up, mm -hmm. and I just had to make a quick move to get to the rim. I had a cook in the corner when Colin uh, helped, helped in, but I just felt like I beat him to the rim. Man, my first dribble was too fast. Yeah, and because first you're step. such a threat from there, right, he's got to pick you up above the three-point line, mm -hmm. and what, you just kind of attack his, his top foot, right? Yeah, his top foot. And then get downhill. Um, and that's an easy finish for you. And we've seen it at the, at the college level for sure. So, all right, that's kind of the, the isolation game, right? But I think you're really dynamic and pick and roll too. So as you come off as a scorer, we'll get into the playmaking stuff, but as you come off, like what is your first read to score? What are you looking at? If he goes under, it's a, it's a shot. And if he comes, if he goes under the, the ball screen, it's a shot right immediately. And if he chases me over, I'll probably break it down, look for the throwback and then yep. wait for Adama going in the post. Yep, so just reading him, uh -huh. goes under, and you let it fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has your confidence grown as a, as a shooter over the years? Oh, that, like, I, coming, coming in, Hurley, Hurley told me he thought that I was like a catch-and-shoot three-point player. Right? Like, he didn't know that I, I like to like get, like, just try to score off the dribble and right. uh, play in the mid-range. And So I, I, I've always been a comfortable three-point shooter. But, but it, like this year, I just, just felt like, like, like I said before, like the season even started, I just felt like more, like the most comfortable I've been like as a player, like a all like an all around player. I just felt like, like I can do anything on the court. That's just like the confidence I'm going. I came into this year with. Yeah, and it's huge. I mean, if, if teams are going to dare you to shoot, you know, like that's that's got to be a layup for you at the NBA level, and, and right there it is. And so, and then also here, okay, kind of the rescreen. Um, take me through this one. Well, Dama didn't really Adama didn't really set the screen, so yep. Justin got over it really easy. And uh, Jeremiah was flat hedging, mm -hmm. so it was probably gonna be probably be hard to beat him to the out to the baseline. So a quick little step back, just three point shot, and make the shot. Yeah, that's an NBA caliber shot right there. Like some of the guards we talked about before, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker. You know, I think you're you're in that mold just with your your size and your shot making ability. Um, so that's 
really really impressive stuff and then the reject too mm -hmm. um what's what's your read here oh uh, well the, i heard the big calling out the ball screen and and AJ Reeves looked like he was a little jumpy to get over the screen. Mm -hmm. So just a, a quick change in direction, and then the help came from the from the top guy. So I just like get to the other side of the room and being able to finish with, through the contact. Yeah, and that's how hard to guard. I mean, NBA teams don't want to give up those rejects because that takes you out of all your defensive principles. Um, and yeah, really impressive stuff. Um, and then here, this is earlier on in the year, right? Um, so I'm curious if you see like anything you would have done differently as you come off here. Either Def definitely hit Zay on a pop. Like mm -hmm. I thought Zay was gonna pop, so I would hit him on a pop, and then he played with Jalen, and I probably get corner. Or I could throw a throwback to Jalen, and Jalen could play with Tyrese. Yep. Yeah. It, or even maybe you're in a position to snake this. Maybe you can keep him on your hip, on your back, kind of put him in jail yeah, a little bit, right? This one was tough because I felt like they were like in a, like a matchup zone kind of thing. Right. Right. Um, but again, I think like we so we've seen the pull up three, we've seen the mid range game, we've seen you get all the way downhill. Um, and I think continuing to grow in these areas, um, the little tricks of the trade, you know what I mean, that you see from some of the best scores, you know, I think you're gonna continue to add all that type of stuff. Um, but again, I think your pick and roll scoring is obviously one of your biggest strengths. So where I think you have probably made, maybe the most room for growth that we'll see in the NBA is as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, you know, your role here is to score the ball, right? Mm -hmm. You've done it at a really, really high level. So I wanna pick your brain on, on some reads here that, you know, maybe you would like back or what you see, you know, as you're coming off from pick and roll here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, okay, they're gonna put two on the ball with you, right? Yeah. Um, so what do you see here against Villanova? His day on the roll. Or have RJ, RJ lift harder to the to the top, like high wing. Yeah. And Drake get corner or throw the skip pass because the corner guy in college usually holding. Right. So just throw the skip pass and look for Drake at the three point line. Yeah. So that's your progression, right? So okay, you have the roll, whether it's a quick pocket pass, hit over the top. But then if they take that away, right, with the with the elbow defender, then you're saying you have the the wing. The skip pass. Yep. Yeah. And then you have the deep corner too, right? Deep corner pass. Yeah. So you're saying that weak side guard or wing at at the at the rim is usually helping over? Yeah. The, the weak the the corner the low guy the yeah. low guy on 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 the strong side. Yep. Yeah. Or the low guy on the weak side is usually the help defender and the restricted. Yeah. So it's either hit the roller, hit Zay on the roll for a little short, quick shot, or Dre get to the corner and throw the skip pass. Yeah. And, and in the NBA, I mean, your guy's not spaced out to the deep corner here, but that's going to be 40% three-point shooter, right? 40% yeah, yeah, sure. three-point shooter lifting up on the wing. Um, but again, here, maybe could have got this off a little quicker, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have a pocket pass or maybe a quick hook pass or no? I think I came with the ball screen too fast. Okay. No, I wasn't patient enough. I think I just like sped off it, looking to beat him, just beat the big. Yep. And then I, I threw the ball too late. So how do you work on stuff like that? Because it's just an experience thing with like, if you watch a lot of the best guards in the NBA, right? Like I always say Chris Paul, like it's like he's playing in slow motion. Yeah. You know, like can't speed him up. Dame, CJ, all like that. Is that something that comes with time? Is yeah, I, that... feel, I feel like that's something that just comes with repetition. Yeah. Just, just getting in the gym and being able to work on little stuff like that. Just working on reads, like the smart, the smart pass stuff like that like in practice that's that's like what i've been working on like just making the right reads out of the pick and roll the, hitting hitting the right the right player every, every time down on pick and roll just just little stuff like that but yeah i like this too okay so just to show you know some of your growth here your patient drag screen and then just easy kick out right mm -hmm. um so that's i think you're gonna have that type of spacing at the next level you're gonna have that type of shooting um, and I think you're going to be a guy who can spray the ball out to a lot of different shooters. Um, dribble handoff. So we talked about pick and roll, talked about isolations. Um, how comfortable are you in these types of situations? It, I, I think that it, this is this is like a major part of my game this year. Yep. Especially like pass and gets. Yeah. Because like like player like usually the best player on the other team is guarding. Yep. And they try to try to deny me a lot, deny me the ball. So I feel like pass and gets is a, is a way where I feel like. Just play off, play like off the ball. Yes. While, while I'm also on the ball, if you understand what, that, what I'm saying, like being able to back cut someone that's trying to scrape me and deny me the ball, or, or come off it and just be able to to, to 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 break down the dribble and just play against the big. Yeah, and it keeps the defense moving, it keeps them shifting, right? Mm -hmm. you, if you look at Brad Beal, like he's amazing in those situations. Mm -hmm. Quick hit, stutter step will come off, and yep. then it's almost like a ball screen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he's one that's really good with those. Jamal Murray is Jamal another Murray, one. Yeah. You watch him at all? A little bit. Yeah, him and Jokic, I mean, they're pretty much unstoppable, right? And, and then, so if you're making those shots out of these handoffs, right, then they got to chase over, and then the float game, right? Yeah. 
So what, have you, has that always been a big part of your game, the yeah, floater? definitely. I, I feel like like last season, even the beginning of this season, I was just like like trying to force stuff at the rim. Like mm -hmm. when I could have easily just shot like a little mid, mid range pull up or, or a floater. And then Hurley's been stressing me a lot this year about just getting to my spots and, and taking the easy one. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like a, a floater is, a, is, a, is an easy way to get a, get a easy basket in the, in the lane. Like it, it's a layup for real. Yeah, no question. And you see your, your touch there. And again, similar as it's almost like a ball screen drop, right? Like that big's trying to play that cat and mouse game, mm -hmm. bluff and recover. You take what the defense gives you and then two points. Um, so yeah, really, really good stuff there. And then, so sprinting around screens too, right? I mean, not that, you know, teams are going to use you like a JJ Redick or anything like that, but I mean, that could probably be a part of your game too, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you see here on this possession, okay? Anything you would have you would have done differently? More so just like the sense of urgency, right? Mm -hmm. Like like when you're coming off as a weapon and you're low and your hands and feet are ready, like then you put a lot of stress on the defense, right? Yeah. Um, like this against USC, you'll see on this next clip, like I thought was really, really good in, in, in just coming off with, with like more energy. Mm -hmm. What do you see? I see he, he chased me under, so I, I just fled the screen. Yep. Yeah, he tries to shoot the gap. Yeah. And then that's perfect. Do you see the contrast in like coming off aggressive and, and like locked in? Yeah, that, it's just like like coming off to score and and just like even even though the, even though the play might not be like a play for me to get a basket or or to make a play, it's just like just coming off with with that mentality. Like I'm about to I'm about to come off this at, at a high speed where where he does he both defenders the big that's gonna that's gonna help up on the guard. Don't know what's going on. Exactly. Or just try try to like. Have your knack, like walk him down and, and, and sprint off the screen, so he could he could be lost. He get somebody else open, just things like that. Um, so clearly, you're extremely talented with the ball in your hands, man. Like, I mean, get into all your spots, pull ups, step backs, hezy game, like all that, really, really impressive. And at the same time, right, like that's a big strength of yours. But say you get drafted, you know, and you gotta go play with James, or you go play with James Harden, and you go play with LeBron, or you go play with guys who are also really good with the ball in your hands, right? And I think that's when maybe you could shift back to some of those things that you were always good at coming yeah, up, right? And I, yeah, that's what, that's why I feel like I, that separates me from from other players in this draft. I feel like you can do both. Like I could, I could just find my offense within any system. Right, you're a good cutter, um, good offensive rebounder, doing those little things too. Like you score it with ease. Um, so I think just some clips to show like what it can look like and how it can improve. Maybe playing off the catch. Um, I mean, that's really good. I know it doesn't fall, but shot preparation, balance. Um, NBA range. I mean, you know, you you definitely have all that in your game, and I like this too. Just the decisiveness, the read, the kick out. Like that's how teams want to play, right? Yeah. What do you see here? Just, just like making a quick read, mm -hmm. like reading the defense quickly and making a, a quick decisive move to drive baseline, and then hit uh, Dre in the corner. Yep. So Evans laid on that kind of drift, right? He doesn't pick away that pass, and then you make the right read. Uh, it doesn't lead to anything, but you know, it doesn't always, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely, I think like playing off the catch in those situations is, is big. And then the shot fake too. How, how's your shot fake? I feel like that's like I feel like that's like like this is a hesitation and it's a shot fake. Like, those are the two superpowers. Like, that's just like part of my game. Like, yeah, it's just something I, I I do to just like keep keep the defense guessing. Yeah, that's really what I say. My my game is just just having the defense guess, guess what I'm gonna try to do next. To keep you off balance. Yeah, just, just, just always have somebody wondering like what, what's he about to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that type of thing. those are the toughest guys to guard, man. Yeah. Defensively, um, how would you kind of grade yourself on the ball, off the ball? What What are some things you know you do well, and some things you can improve? You think? I feel like I feel like I could definitely improve off the ball, like just staying engaged. I yeah. feel like I feel like sometimes I get disengaged, like maybe I'm, I'm tired, trying to take possession off, or just just, just staying engaged the whole time and staying focused. Same with on the ball. Like, like here, I'm guarding David Duke, and he's a tough player. So mm -hmm. it's just like staying focused, locked in on, on, on what I got to do to shut him down. This possession. Yeah, this this was great. You know, I, I was impressed with your on-ball defense. I, I I think you're a guy who has quick feet, good fundamentals. You know, like this this right here is case in point of how to sit down, slide, and I mean he's a big, strong kid too, right? Yeah. Taking away that drive, he likes to get downhill to his right hand, and you know they don't get into anything here. Just because you keep your body in front, good contest, right? Yeah, without fouling. And I also guarded without fouling. That's that, key that's for you? A, a huge emphasis. I feel like last year it was like I was playing every game in foul trouble. Yeah. 
So that, that's been a huge emphasis, being able to guard without fouling. They got to change it to six fouls. Yeah, they got to. Six fouls, move back the line, 24 second shot clock. Oh, we on the same page. Right? Oh, we on the same Let's page. Let's get up and down, man. Up Let's play. Down. Let's play. Um, yeah, again, I think you're somebody who can guard ones and twos. Um, and you've had some good possessions in transition, too. Just like finding the ball early, uh, being active with your feet, hands. Uh, then he kind of catches you slipping here, though. What do you, what do you see? Um, I feel like I was backing up. I was, uh, the whole time I was backing up. I feel like he had me on my heels. I thought he was going to shoot a three. And then he beat me, but I, I knew Zay was there for the help. So. so how do you play a guy like David Duke? Straight up. Straight up? Yeah, straight up. What do you think is your best defensive position at the next level? Like, do you think, like, point guards, twos? Oh, yeah, I got one through three. One through three? One through three. Yeah. And I do, like, watching this, too, I think that you have a lot more toughness than, like, your typical person would think. Yeah. Just given, because you can be a little loosey-goosey, right? Yeah. Um, do you agree with that? Definitely. I, I feel like that, that comes from... From what we would do, what we doing here? Yes. Like if, if you just watch the practice, like, like we, we smack talk, we talk, we talk to each other yeah. in, a, in a different type of way, and it's just like, like, like you're, you're not scoring on me. Yeah. It's just straight like that, and that, that's just the mentality we all go into in this game, like just winning battles. Like we have like a category in our film where we battles won and battles losses, and then just just being able to win individual battles. That's a big part of it. So film from games or practice? Yeah, just games. Like in, in a game, like we, we we have battles lost. Like okay. All the, all the battles that we lost, maybe that's like a, a loose ball you lost. Yep, a rebound 50, 50 balls. A rebounding battle or something like that. You got scored on a one-on-one -on -one situation, and then this battle's won. Like you got to stop. You got to rebound. A tough rebound. You, you do the ball ahead, and, and you got someone else involved, something like right. that. Right. So just trying to win battles and, and, and tell yourself, like, he's not scoring. So like winning play, things that impact winning. Winning plays. Gotcha, and you track that. They track, the staff tracks that? Yes, sir. That's huge. And sometimes, some teams have tried to pick on you a little bit in the post, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you see here? As soon as he threw the ball to uh, AJ Reed, my immediate thought was to just to front him. Yeah. He was trying to post me. Yep. And then just just like not let not let him get an easy catch. And if he does get a catch, catching it far from the block. And yeah, just fighting with him. So not, if it's not let him get an easy catch. So if it's below free throw line extended, then you'll you'll full front, right? If it's full a, front, yeah. And if he if he dribbles towards the baseline, I'll just front him from the other side. Like right. I, yeah, I just front from the other and side. You got help behind with, you with my right hand. Yep. But that's a great battle right there. You know, a, a guy six six five, you know, battling in the post, fighting. It's such a switch heavy NBA that you got to be able to hold up in those switches, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and then here again, kind of a similar situation. Obviously not a big. I think Justin Moore here, but the quick hands, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just experience playing a lot of basketball, you know. So uh, you mentioned off-ball defense, and, and I agree. I think that's probably an area you have room to improve as well. Yeah. Um, take me through this play here. So you guys are kind I already of know this play. You've I think seen I, this I, one, huh? I helped up, and Justin got a dunk. Yep. So are you guys because they're exchanging, right? Yeah. Like, are you communicating these switches? Are you? Yeah. Like, like this is what I mean. Like staying engaged, being able to talk to Tyler, and tell him to stay up since they're playing in the ball screen. Right. In the ball screen. The, the, the high guy just stays up and the low guy stays in the hole. Yeah, so you guys could, could stay stay put there yeah. and then just not losing sight of yours, right? Yeah, and I, I, this is the, he's, a, he's driving on the strong side too, so that's really just a stunt and a stay. Right. Stay corner. Yeah, stunt and stay home. Yeah. And then he ends up cutting, gets a dunk out of it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's a big one. And then even here off the ball, like, they might ask you, go guard Steph. You know, guys who move so much, go guard Dave. Mm -hmm. And what do you see here? So David Duke? I, I, that's just like a loss of focus and not being locked in on the play. You've man, seen man, these ball clips. watches. Yeah, I've seen all of these. <laughs> I've seen all of these. <laughs> <laughs> and even though you get a good contest too, right? Uh, at the next level, again, it's that's sometimes it's milliseconds. That's three points. Yep, three points, and then you're on the bench. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, like you said, I think those are you know important areas of growth because you have the potential to do it. You know. Quick hands, great feet, like blowing the, blowing up this DHO. You know, I love this, right? So you stay attached, just deny it. And little things like that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you have the instincts off the ball too. You know, I think we, you've had a lot of possessions where, you know, I think you've been good in those situations. Um, you know, here against Villanova, he's fighting for the offensive rebound, but I like this, you know? Like you're in possession, you're in position off the ball, ball's gonna swing eventually, you're in position again, taking away that, that corner hit, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, I mean, you can just see how much more engaged you are here. Um, so, overall, man, I think, you know, you're one of the more complete players in this draft when you talk about your scoring ability at, at all three levels and what you've done already, you know, at the college level. Like, what are the, the next steps for you personally? Like, do you have a development plan of, like, these are the things I really want to attack. This is what I, I want to look like in three years, five years. Like, what's the future like for, for James Whitner? Uh, definitely, like we talked about earlier, uh, just, like, making reads on the ball screen. Yep. Continuing to get better with that. Uh, continue to become a better ball handler, a better rebounder, a uh, better on the ball defender, off the ball defender. Um, just, just like like ma like mastering the game, like under understanding the game more, like be being like a like a, like a student of it. Like yeah. everyone always says, being a student of the game and just just be, being able to, to to listen to listen to what people have to say to me. Like constructive criticism, yep. being able to take that and apply it to my game and, and just better myself. James, I appreciate the time, man, and best of luck, you know, in the Big East tournament and moving forward. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.